Okay, so we're moving right along. We've learned how to tie in button events. We've learned how to tie in text to our script. And yet our script is real short here. You know, it's, it, it basically barely takes up a screen full. Yet we've already started the functional basic beginnings of our game of being able to buy stores here, see the money go down. Now it's time to actually make money uh, with our stores. And so we're going to start by understanding a little bit about about the timers behind this. And we put this off a little bit uh, until now because it adds a little bit more complexity because what we're going to want to have happen is each, you know, so many seconds, we want this lemonade stand to make money for us, you know, and we want to keep track of that uh, with a timer. And, and, and the way we do that is now we get to actually use our update statement. So here in our update that gets called once a frame, we're going to keep, be keeping track of how much time has gone by and the current timer uh, uh, for our store. So let's go ahead and set up a timer to, to, to say how long we want um, it to be between uh, each time our store makes money. So let's go ahead and say float and we're just going to call this the timer. And let's start out by setting it to four seconds. So 4F four for four seconds. And we're setting it as a float because we might want sometimes to have four and a half seconds or two and a half seconds. And because uh, the time itself is going to be in, um, you know, fractions of a second. Now, because we're, we have a timer, we also are going to have to have a way to keep track along the way of what it currently is at. So when it starts perhaps at zero, we're going to have to keep track of when we're at one second, when we're at two seconds, when we're at three seconds, and, and so on. So we're going to keep a current timer. So we're going to say float current timer. And we can go ahead and start this out at zero. We just can actually do that because it's a whole number. So just showing you the different ways you can do it. Now this is a, a way, and I'm showing you a way, where you don't have to do this in the start. Notice how here we did our store count in the start and our current balance in the start and our base store cost. I'm showing you how you can also do that up here in the declarations. So we're declarating here that this is happening as, as part of the definition. So every time um, we create a new instance of store, it's going to be four, a float of four for timer and a zero for current timer. We could just as easily done this down here but it's just another way to show that to you okay so one of the aspects of this of this game to remember is, is is it's a bit of a click game in other words we only want the timer to go when people click the the you know for now we're going to make it so they have to click this right here but Maybe we'll do it. We'll, we'll click a, a make a button for it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click a, make a little button up here. We'll make it really small. And we'll just say right now, what do we want to call it? And you can call this whatever you want. We'll just call it click to make it real simple. And we'll replace this with an image later. But this this uh, tycoon game. The idea is, is that you click this to make the the timer start, and once the timer's over, you get your money. You click it again, the timer starts. When it's over, you make your money. You click it again, timer's over, you make your money, and that gets repetitive. So later in the gameplay, that's when we add in our managers and so forth. So you don't have to click it every time, but in our initial gameplay, you're gonna have to click this every time. Okay. So we're going to just call this um, store click. Actually, we'll just call it store button, store click button. We want to keep the button in there so we know that we're talking about a button. Every time they click this button, it's going to start our timer. Okay. So we're going to come down here and create a way to, to trap this action public void store click on click like that 
This one's buy store on click, so we named it different. This is just the store on click. And this is where we're going to start our timer. So in a lot of ways, this is where we could reset our timer. So our current timer would, would get reset here. Okay, so this is what's going to happen when we want to, you know, start, start our timer. And um, so, so how, how do we do that? Well, what we're going to want to do is we're going to we're going to we're going to check this against what our current our current timer is. So so we're going to we're going to have to have a way to basically keep track of when the timer's on and when the timer's off and when, when they click because we don't want this running when they're when they haven't clicked. So we need one more variable. And it's going to be a boolean. And so you do B O O L, and this is just basically means true or false. Um, if if you're a very new beginner, this will be new, but um, basically just a boolean variable is a true or false, and we'll say we'll call this start timer. And um, it's all it's going to default to false when, whenever this when whenever you have it uh, not not uh, declared here, but we could go down here just to make sure. And say start timer equals false, just to make sure that nothing's running. We have we don't have the timer for this store running yet. And so what we want to do down here is just say start if or, you know start timer equals true. Now we don't want it to do it if it's already running. So we're going to say just like we did up here, we can just say um, if uh, start timer. Remember how we said before, we just did a, a if, we can say if not, and actually I can use my exclamation point here, if not start timer. I think I can do that. Or actually, the preferred way would be equals false. And that's, I think I can do it that way, and I might be able to do it this way. So that's a shortcut. So you should say if not start timer. So if we if we haven't already started, then we start it. That's just you know another another way to to do it. Either way, it would work because if it's if it, even if it's off, it, what we what we what we don't want to do is to you know have it counting when when we don't need it to. So now in our update, the only time we want it to run is if the timer's running. So we say if start timer like this. And so our if statement is telling us we only want to run this when our boolean is true for start timer. Okay. And now that that we've that we know our timer's running, we want to increment our current timer. And so this is the magic of it. This is kind of what we've been waiting for. Now we could do it this way: current timer equals current timer plus. But I'm going to show you the shortcut now. We're going to say current timer plus equals, and that's equivalent to saying if we said current timer equals current timer plus. So we say plus equals time dot delta time. Now this is just something that you have to know uh, with learning Unity, so all of this, you know, there's always a little bit of a learning curve. But time dot delta time is just basically when we start out current timer at zero, this is going to basically keep track of the change that has happened every time through this update. Because what's going to happen is, is depending upon your computer, this update might be faster or slower. Um, maybe if you're running a really, really, really fast computer, you might be doing 200, 300 frames a second in a game like this. And so these are going to be really, really, really tiny. On a slow computer, maybe you're only getting, uh, or on a mobile device, maybe you're only getting 25 frames a second or something. And so this number will be higher. But regardless of what this number is, whatever it happens to be, it's going to add it to our current timer. So as the time's going by, this is going up. And now we can check by saying if the current timer is greater than the timer, which we defined up here, 
And maybe I, I'll call this Store Timer. That's probably better. Store Timer. It's probably a, a little better name. I just change it. Don't be afraid to change names that you think are bad. So I'm going to call this Store Timer. So if, if our current timer is greater than our total Store Timer, then we know we need to reset our timer back to zero. So that's the first thing we know we need to do. But even before that, we want to set our um, start timer equal to false. So it won't run this again. This can't run again because as soon as our current timer gets over the amount, we turn it off so it can't run. We set it back to zero again. And then now the thing we want is we want to update our balance. So we set our current balance equal to And we can do our plus equals again because we don't need to, again, do current balance equals current balance plus when we can use this shorthand. But notice how um, one of the variables we haven't showed up is how much uh, profit the store makes. We have how much the score costs and we have our current balance, but we don't have our uh, base store profit. So let's do that. Float base store profit. And Here's where we can set that at. Base store profit. Let's just make it 50 cents. We'll keep it keep it uh, small. Base store profit. Ah, see the misspelling here? That's how it caught it here. We, we don't want it both. Uh, see, we want base store profit. So our base store profit. So this is our base store profit. So our current balance is going to equal our current balance plus our base store profit. And then there's another thing we want to do is we want to update our current balance to show the new balance. So one of the things that you'll notice that we're, we're having right here is a proliferation of this. So let's go ahead and run it, though, so we can see it work. I'm going to copy and paste it. So this will update the text of the balance. So I'll save that. And we need one more thing is that we need a way... Uh, to you know when that button's clicked to call the store on click so we come back to here and well back to unity again and um, to our store panel I'm sorry we go to our click button and notice how there's nothing happening when we do our on click so we click our plus and we drag our store panel in here we pick our store function and we have our store on click right there. So that's good, what's going to make the store click. Now, the thing is, is we don't have a lot of visual things showing us uh, what's happening here. So it might be worth putting a debug in this. So I might want to come up here and say debug.log clicked the store. Just so I know that the button got clicked. And then I could also go in here and say, um, like for when the timer um, runs out and the store.timer is greater than the store timer, I can come in here and debug log and say uh, timer has ended reset. And so it's going to reset the timer, but it's also going to set the, the start timer to fall so this won't keep running and you'll have to click the button again for it to run. So with that done, let's run this and see what happens. We're going to run it. We've only got one store. Let's do the click and say, notice as it said, clicked on the store. And our timer's running in the background. And now we see that timer's ended, timer's reset. And notice we have $6.50. Let's click it again. Click the store. And it's going to go up to $7. Timer is ended. Let's buy a few more stores, so our money goes down to one. But now notice when we hit click, and it's over, we still only got 50 cents. Why? Because we didn't multiply it by our store count. So that's our final thing to do here. And if you guys caught that, that was a good catch. But it's not just our current balance uh, plus our base store profit. We need to multiply this by our store count. So let's run it one more time. 
buy some stores so we get our balance down to zero and when I click we should have 250 because we have five stores and we're getting 50 cents for each store now we can buy more stores we actually could just buy one but if I click again now our, our, our balance goes up to four dollars because you know it, it, and we can buy another store we actually bought two stores now we've got eight so in your in your head here what's we have eight stores at 50 cents per store when we click click we know we're going to add four dollars up for to a total of five so we our, our little basic engines running we can buy stores we can click and we can um, you know force the you know force this basically to to start the timer and buy more stores and um, in the next uh, section we'll get where we can actually see visually the timer and uh, go by rather than just having uh, to wait and see it that will actually show a visual representation uh, of it as well so but I think this it ends this section as creating kind of the basics for our engine and now we'll get into expanding it and and exploring how to turn this into a real business type engine